2.9 completing the square. This is part of the ultimate revision guide for further maths GCSE. This is the algebra section. We have an index button at the top here that takes you back to the index for algebra, and then there's an index that can take you back to the index for the whole of the revision guide. Okay, so um, the only difference with completing the square in further maths is the fact that you have an ax squared term, and they can make the questions a little bit trickier when you've got to equate coefficients. So the way we deal with this ax squared term is we divide by this number. Usually, um, the questions I've seen, this whatever's in front of this, say this is a 2x squared, then this b is going to be a multiple of 2. And therefore, we can just um, factorize out the a um, out of this first two things, make a bracket there, and then complete the square on that bracket. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So it's not it's a little extra step you need to do before you do the rest, but the actual method of completing the square is virtually the same. Um, so is solving quadratic equations by completing the square is the same as you would do at GCSE higher maths. Um, equating coefficients, um, that means if you have um, something like you have, um, say, 3x squared on one side, um, plus something, plus something, and that equals to ax squared plus something, plus something, then you know that a equals 3 because that's the only x squared term. So if this is an x term, this is a number, then all the x squared terms must be equal. So the sum of the x squared terms on this side must be the same as the sum of the x squared terms on this side. So if we know this is 3x squared, then we know this is an a. And that's essentially what we've got to do for equating coefficients. But I'll show you some examples in a second. OK, on to some examples. OK, so work out the value of a, b, and c such that this is true. So this is just telling us to put it into the completed the square form. You can see you've got the, it's giving you all the clues you need. You've got something times the bracket. Um, so normally we have the x plus a all squared plus b, but we've got an extra term in our, here now. So we need to look at this first section here and realize to make this x squared, we just need to divide by 4. So if we do this 4 x squared plus 2x and have the minus 1. We, we're starting to get the sort of form that we're going to have here. And we can complete the square inside this bracket. The standard way of doing that is to remember you've got to half this number. So that's going to be uh, 1. And we've got the 4 on the outside of this square here. And then realizing when we multiply this out, we get x times x, which is the x squared term. We get 1 times x and x times 1, which is the, and which added together gets the 2x. And then we get the 1 times 1, which is the extra term we need on the end. Not forgetting it's times by 4, and that's the tricky bit. So we've got to subtract 4 lots of this number squared. And then we've got the extra minus 1 on the outside that we had before. So we've got 4x plus 1 all squared, minus 4 lots of 1, minus 1, which is just minus 5. Obviously with this, it's very easy to check you've got it right because you just multiply it out again. And it should give you the same answer as you started with. Um, if we multiply this out, we're going to get 4x squared plus 8x um, plus 4. And then we're going to take away 5 to get the minus 1. So that works nicely. So the key here is to factorise out this number in front of the x squared. Um, half that value there. Then multiply that out and take it away times by this number. That gives you that extra number term there. You can just maybe figure out what that number is anyway, um, if you don't want to use a method there. Okay, we've got a slightly harder version. Work out the values of P and Q such as this. So you've got the negative x squared here. And it wants it in this form where you've got the negative there. So we're really just going to um, complete the square on what we've got here. So essentially what we're doing is we're factorizing out a negative 1. So we've got 6 minus 1 lots of um, 4x plus x squared. So I've taken the negative out of that. I've taken the negative out of that, so these become pluses. Um, let's just rearrange that so that it's, we don't need the 1 because times by 1 is just the same as having a negative there. So we've got the sort of negative form here. And we have it this way around x squared plus 4x. And then we complete the square on that, so we get um, x plus half this number to get 2 all squared and then when we multiply that out we've got um, 
we've got the x squared, we've got the 4x because we've got 2x and 2x, and then we've got the 2 times 2 which is 4. But we're going to take away that 4, um, so we need to add that back just to cance cancel out that, so taking away a 4. And then we finish it up, we've got uh, 6 plus 4 is 10, minus x plus 2 all squared. Let's just check I've got that right, so I've got 10 minus x squared minus 2x, uh, 2x minus 2x minus 4. So we've got the 10 take away 4 is 6 minus the x squared um, minus 4x and so minus 4x minus x squared. So that's the same as, as this, which is ideal. So that's the there's our answer for p and q. Okay, now we've got a question to work out the values such that this this is the same. So there's another one we're completing the square. So this is the first part of a, of a question like this. So we'll take the three out. So we've got three brackets x squared plus. Now this is a bit trickier, isn't it? So we've got to divide that by three. So we've got four thirds x minus one. Okay, so we complete the square on this. So we take um, half of this number and put it here. Well, half of four thirds is two thirds. And then we've got to subtract this number um, squared times by this number. So take away three lots of two thirds squared and take away one on the end. So we've got three brackets x plus two thirds or squared. Okay, so this squared is going to be four ninths times by 3 is going to be 12 ninths. I'm going to take away another 1. So we've got 12 ninths take away minus 12 ninths minus another 1. Well 12 ninths is 1 and 3 ninths which is 1 and a third. So it's minus 2 and a third. Okay, hence or otherwise solve the equation. So to solve the equation um, we just need to make that equal to zero. So I take that over to here. I've already got a lot of space here, so we'll just have to try and squeeze it in. And then we just use the same sort of method we would do in ordinary math. So um, we add the minus two and one third to get two and one third on this side. We divide by the three, well two and one third, I should really have that as a top every fraction. Six is seven thirds. Um, divide by the 3 makes 7 ninths. So dividing by 3 is just um, times them by a third, which is 7 over 9. Then we've got to square root that. So we've got um, x plus 2 thirds is plus or minus the square root of 7 over 9. I'm running out of that space now. Um, so x equals minus two thirds plus or minus the square root of seven over nine. And it's asking to give your answer to three significant figures. So we just put that into the calculator. So we've got minus two thirds plus square root of 7 over 9 and that gives us uh, 0.215 or if we could change that to a plus sorry that was a plus wasn't it taking that to a minus minus 1.55. Okay, so those are two answers there. Okay, so that's, so that's a few examples of completing the square with this um, added complication of the AX squared, even with a minus sign in front of that. And then we've got one where we've got to solve an equation.